seconds, how many men we would need to run that ammunition constantly up to this gun. So we're going to go ahead and load and fire this gun again, but this time we're going to explain what each position does uh, and how we fire this gun safely. Um, when I give the command take aim, that's cue to cover your ears because there's a loud bang that you come with the next man to fire. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stay here after the demonstration. We can take down the ropes after we're done if you want to get a closer look at the gun, get any pictures. And again, when we're done, I encourage you to visit our artificers over there and learn some more. The man on the front left has a tool known as a gun hook or a wad hook or a worm. It's not a large wine bottle opener. Uh, it's <laughs> insert into the barrel of the cannon to check to see if there's any burning flannel bag left uh, in, this, in this cannon. So the way around is made is we have a flannel bag filled with upwards of two pounds of gunpowder. Then that's tied to a wooden, uh, what's called a sabot, which is also strapped to that cannonball. That bag may still be burning in there. If we put another cannon around in there, uh, it might explode prematurely. We don't want that to happen. A bit of fun. Man on the front right has a dual tool. It's a sponge head on one end and a ramrod end on the other. He's gonna dip that sponge in that just bucket of water there. Ten bed. The man on the rear right of the cannon has a leather thumb saw on his thumb. Uh, that is placed over the vent hole of the cannon. Uh, by doing so, he's denying any oxygen from entering the breech of that gun. Again, if something were burning in there and we've denied it oxygen, it should extinguish. Punch key! Then the man on the front right inserts his, his sponge into the cannon. Uh, it's a damp sponge. It should, again, extinguish anything that should be burning. And he's also cleaning this as well. Handle cartridge. The man there passed has a leather cartouche. Uh, that leather cartouche will protect that cannon round uh, from any incoming fire or loose sparks maybe in the air. Uh, he will then advance that cartridge to the man on the front left who will insert it into the cannon. Now remember, we're, this is not only a six pound cannonball, but another two pounds of black powder. Uh, so we're upwards of eight pounds to carry that round. Ram down cartridge. With the other end of its tool, the front right man then seats that cartridge into the breech of the gun. Prime. The man on the rear right is equipped with a brass vent pick. He'll insert that into the vent, poking a hole into that cartridge bag, and then removing from the front box uh, that he has on front of him a quill. In the period, this would be a bird quill or possibly a piece of rolled tin infused with gunpowder. Essentially what we're doing is making a fuse uh, to connect the outside of the gun, the vent hole, uh, into the cannon round itself. And before I give the last command to fire, the man on the rear left has a tool known as a linstock. It's a slow burning match cord. Uh, it's a braided cord infused with potassium nitrate. As he fans that, it'll burn hotter. That heat will ignite any of the gunpowder that's on the quill, which then will ignite the gunpowder inside the barrel. The game fired! That's very loud.
Nice work. So if anybody has any questions or wants to get a closer look here, just give us a few moments. It's just going to heat up. So what we suspect is after you probably get about the third round off there, you do you know, upwards of 10 rounds a minute. Uh, more than likely, again, it's uh, tending that minimum.